Welcome to the PropTech Podcast. It's Kylie Davis here, and I'm delighted to be your host as we explore the brave new world where technology and real estate collide. The aim of each episode is to introduce listeners to a PropTech innovator who is pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and we'll explore the issues and challenges raised by the tech and how they can create amazing property experiences. So my guest in this episode is Sandy Moore, um, CEO of property management startup, Our Property. And our property is a cloud-based property management system that streamlines the work property managers do around managing and maintaining property. And it's one of those PM systems that asks the question, do you really need a trust account? So we're going to explore that and lots more of the issues around um, cloud-based property management. Sandy Moore, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks a lot, Kylie. Pleasure to be here. So, so Sandy... Um, give us your elevator pitch. What does? What, oh, how do you explain? <laughs> <laughs> Two-second elevator pitch. Hey, look, yeah. well, the, the platform, in, in essence, um, is just that. It's an integrated platform. We really think the industry needs a um, single deep product that really resolves the problems they have. And we see those issues as being reducing cost and increasing revenues. Mm-hmm. So we certainly don't think there's a future in app stacking in this business. So we think mm-hmm. that the way the industry has gone in the last couple of years in particular where people have a lot of small apps and they stack them up on top of each other is probably not a really great way forward. Right. Um, we think the future is contained in a trust-free environment within a real estate office. We mm-hmm. think an office needs to control the money absolutely, but we yep. don't think they ever need to take possession of it. We think the banking um, processes move well beyond that some time back. And it's, mm-hmm. it's about time, I guess, the industry caught up with that. So we look for control without taking possession, which means we don't need a trust account. Right. Um, we look at integrating a lot of the processes and particularly the customer journeys. Yeah. Um, and we see so that as a big feature, I guess, in, in getting that customer journey integrated into the process. So what sort of things can I do in our property that I probably can't do or I in a traditional property management system? Or what sort of things can I do more easily? Okay. So the basis of the system is automation. So Mm -hmm. when the product was developed by the founder, Russ, a few years back, it was developed initially as a maintenance product. So he came to the industry from that side of the business, looking at the maintenance problem in management and saying, look, how can this be resolved? Because it was taking up normally over 50% of a property manager's time was spent on maintenance inquiries, which was just crazy because... Most landlords put very little value in the process, but it becomes a massive part of the business. So initially it was looked at from that point. So our our main key difference is automation. So the system we have is a a heavily workflow-based system rather than the traditional systems in the marketplace really are accounting products with some workflow-based working off that process, whereas Mm -hmm. ours is completely the opposite. It's, it's a workflow-based product with a heavy degree of automation and quite a large degree of artificial intelligence in there to drive it. Right. So things like in maintenance where you would have those issues before of a lack of transparency and the property manager, I guess, caught in the middle of this vortex of competing interests, you no longer have that. Right. Um, you have an automated product that allows you to sit at the centre of people that can then function around you. So I guess, in essence, the property manager becomes the ringmaster um, and the activity can go on without them physically having to be involved every step of the way. And it just saves an enormous amount of time. So I think what we're seeing in in some of the new generation prop techs that are coming out now is uh, these uh, businesses that are looking at ways of stopping agents from needing to be the bottleneck of all information. And so I guess that's, so that's what I'm hearing you're telling me is that this is allowing property managers to not to not be a bottleneck of... Yeah, um, exactly. You know, they should be the ringmaster controlling events and adding value rather than be seen as the person stopping things happening. Yeah, yeah. And or the really they can only happen if they've actually managed to get to the email in, in the right yeah, time. Or exactly. Yeah, there's 400 emails and 50 phone calls away. And there's no way they can do that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's a really interesting point when you look at value equations. You know, in residential property management, the, the property manager is often considered the low end of the value chain. Whereas you go to the commercial real estate world, the asset manager is the highest paid guy in the building. Yeah. <laughs> they're adding real value to clients. Um, and I think that's where we're looking at moving things around. You know, we, we see that a residential property manager shouldn't be any different from that. They should be asset managers adding real value to clients. Yep. 
No, I and completely... when you have automation, that's the beauty of it. It, it takes all that um, day-to-day process type work and automates it. It then frees up the person who used to do those tasks to do that really high value stuff, that one-to-one sort of communication with a landlord. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's got real value to it. And that's the thing a machine can't ever replicate. Yeah. I wonder if it's got something to do with the history of residential property management kind of coming out of an admin role and therefore yeah, absolutely. Yeah. just yeah. it, 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 it is very secretarial in its yeah, kind of exactly. management, it's, isn't it's it? It's sort of like the software developed the same way. Um, yeah. you know, it developed as this admin type product. And as property managers said, oh, well, we needed to do a bit more, someone in the, the back room would go, oh, okay, we'll try and add on this little feature that somehow works and move stuff around. But at its very core is this old base system. Yeah. And that's sort of been the problem going forward with the legacy products because at the very core you've got this pretty old dysfunctional system that you can't really do much with. Yeah. So you mentioned before about app stacking. Like tell me... Give me, let's unpack that a little bit. What does, okay. what does that um, mean? Without going to any brand names, no. <laughs> there's a lot of apps in our business <laughs> that, that do small functions. Now, look, I really understand where it comes from yep. because from my perspective, the easiest way for a company like ours to make money is to develop a small app that does one product and go to the industry and sell it mm-hmm. because I can quite easily and quite cheaply develop something that does a little job very, very well and give it a perceived value to a user and go and sell it and get cash back, sell the companies, do whatever I want to do and, and move on. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a very simple thing to do and it's, it's very cost effective from the developer's point of view. But from an agency point of view, it doesn't really work because you end up developing a platform that has all these apps tied into it and they all rely on a flow of data. Now, right. each of those apps controls the flow of data and generally they only push it one way, sometimes two ways, but often only one way. And if any of those parts of the chain fall out, you as the user in the end are left with nothing because pretty much everything will start falling over as you speak. So it's really just not a very effective way of dealing with things. Um, Obviously, it's very expensive as well because each of those app builders you need to pay. Um, Their price sort of integrates but sort of sometimes doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it's a really difficult thing. So, you know, in the future we see that's probably not going to be where things are at. There'll be one or two, but not not what we have now, which really people are looking for a, a basic software package and then plugging in a ton of apps on top of it to try and make it do what they need it to do. We really think there's very little future for that. Right. So are you saying that you're more of a walled garden in terms of, of how your system runs? Yeah, look, we... we Work with a number of other companies in integration, so um, a lot of connections providers and bond funding and all sorts of different companies that have uses. And, you know, you look at this going forward, um, you know, the the history has been with, say, a connections company where the office would send um, a name and a phone number and an address to a third party who would then use a call centre to call back and try and convert those leads into connections deals. Mm -hmm. Whereas now when you have a predetermined customer journey and workflow online with an app, Mm-hmm. in our system to the client direct, you can start dealing with them through their app in the customer journey at times that suit them and giving them information they need when they need it and allowing them to take those decisions when they need to. So instead of having to go through that really, really clunky process of a callback, mm-hmm. they can actually instigate the whole thing themselves. Right. So there's real value in that for the clients from the client's perspective. And, you know, is, that, but is, and so is that because you're, you've rebuilt that system inside your platform yeah, or is that, yeah, or yeah. that you, so yeah. we've mapped out we've used our workflow engines to map out that customer journey in the tenant acquisition in particular so mm-hmm. from the the original um signing of the property through an online maa through to the um uplinking of advertising through to the pulling in of inquiry through to the inspections the application process the vetting of those applications right through this journey there's different points where the client, the customer can see different things that might suit them, whether it's a mm-hmm. connection or anything else. And mm-hmm. you can really tailor that um, product into the journey. Right. Okay. And, yeah, instead of getting that very clunky callback and that really time-consuming event, you can actually have the information available for a click-through where the customer can just make a decision and go, instead of call me, I'm just going to hit the button saying connect me. Right. So okay. Far less friction. But, but you but you can do that with with apps on an open API. Like you could plug them all in together to make them you talk can. to each other. Yeah. Most of them only talk out one way though. Some talk back. Right. But most talk right. one way, okay. which is very limiting when you start developing. Right. Okay. So how long has our property been around for? Like, what's the uh, um, yeah, look, who's involved the in the company? Our property as a company has been going for around oh, three years or so now. Mm-hmm. So it's getting into that semi mature stage, which is great. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we've built up our customer numbers pretty hugely in the last year. Yeah, three um, years is a long time in Perth. Yeah, yeah, right so, yeah we're, we're old people. Dog, it's dog years, yep. Indeed, it is. It's beyond that, I think. So, yeah, look, we, we've built up now. We've got, well, over 100,000 uh, properties on the platform, which is great. Um, we'll probably build our, our client growth will be in triple digits again this year, which is fantastic. So that, that part of it's going very strongly. You know, there's a lot of demand for the sort of product we have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at this stage, there's not a lot of product that's really highly integrated and really highly automated. You know, generally, we're, I guess, the exception to the rule at the moment. So oh. that's been a good thing for us. So so let's have a little um, – so, so what are the notions that you're challenging in how real estate is typically done? Okay, well, I guess the first notion was, you know, does an agent need a trust account? I mean, you mentioned yeah. that earlier. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I came across this a number of years ago. I've worked in Asia in the US and here in Australia. And the issue everybody had was this trust account. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in Asia, no one wanted the agent to hold the money because they didn't trust them. In the US, mm-hmm. it was all about litigation. In Australia, it was about the cost of managing it. But yeah. in essence, it was the same problem. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I looked with Russ, um, our CTO here, and we said, well, the technology is definitely here now where we can move beyond this. Yeah. And we absolutely have to have control of the money as an industry because that's how we pay fees and we pay people. But yeah. we, we don't anymore need to take physical possession of the funds. So that was a big change. And we're working with agencies now across the country plus all the OFTs because, you know, the legislators and the regulators in the business now need to, to change. And, you know, I've got to say they're very, in the main, we've found them very, um, very good with this because they realise a trust-free agency is a much safer place for everybody. It's much safer for the agent, much safer from the consumer point of view. So that's yeah. a big thing. And, and I guess this is where fintech and prop tech start to come together a bit too, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're definitely broaching those those two areas. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to be, to be frank, our fintech side now is is quite old-fashioned. You know, we, we have, you know, open oh. banking's moving in now and a whole lot of different things are happening. Blockchain, all these things are a part of the future. Now, yeah. our current banking system is relatively straightforward. Um you know, in Australia now, you can't even use the NPP, the new uh, payment platform, to do commercial uh, direct debits yet. You know, it's, it's crazy. So you mm. still have a two-day clearance on a commercial direct debit. Just mad. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 um, so trust accounts is one way that you guys are challenging yeah, traditional uh, notions. How uh, else? Um, certainly by bringing um, the product together. So taking that customer journey and bringing the whole thing to one place. Because mm-hmm. that's a big change. Yeah. Um, we're looking at keyless entry and what that can do. Right. So we don't imagine we'll have keys in the next probably 12 to 18 months that will be gone. You know, physical right. hard keys. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you don't you know, have them in Hong Kong, do you? No. I, look, I personally haven't had a door key in my own property for many years. Right. I originally had a keypad. Uh, yeah. That was 15 years ago. Um, and then we moved to, to swipes. Um yeah. You know, you think through this from a, from a customer perspective, from a tenancy side, and, you know, we're looking at a dual-key lock. It's not a, a single swipe only. It's a key or a swipe, so the tenant can make that choice. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, all of a sudden I can send to your app the, the, the photo and the licence details for the electrician that's coming around. I can mm-hmm. offer you to be there at the property or to stay at work. And mm-hmm. he can swipe himself in. It'll ping your phone when he swipes in. It'll ping your phone when he swipes out. Um, it'll check his ID before he opens that door. So it's not like me in the office having to give, like a property manager having to give a key to a third party and hope he's the person who goes and does the job. I can actually check here that the person at the front door is the person registered and licensed to do the work. Mm -hmm. Um, We can check their invoice in, uh, sorry, their time in, so time stamps them in and time stamps them out on the job. It'll then reconcile that against their invoice, against their bill. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of really great advantages. So the tenant gets a lot of convenience, the landlord gets a lot of transparency, um, and the agent saves a fortune because now I don't need tradesmen coming backwards and forwards, and now I can grow my business. Because yeah. I can't, you know, if I have a rent roll in the centre of Sydney, I can also have a rent roll in potentially Darwin. Yeah. Because I don't and need to physically control the access. Yeah, and you're not losing your staff rushing out the door to go and meet a tradie who then doesn't yeah. turn up for 15 yeah. minutes or an yeah. hour or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, most of the bills now in this in this business, um, a, a large portion, if not more than half the bill, is made up of the time it takes to collect and return a key, which is yeah. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. <laughs> just madness, absolute madness. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, so are there any other notions that you're challenging? So trust oh, accounts, yeah, keyless entry? I'm not sure how many more I can tell you. <laughs> oh, give me one more. Go on. Give me one more. <laughs> but, look, I, I certainly think um, no trust, no key are the big things for agency. Yep. Um, 
we see it as our job to increase revenues to agency. Our big, our big um, business model challenge has been how do we grow revenue and then how do we grow profit within an agency. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Macquarie Bank will, will has given a number of um, uh, talks to the industry about where the fees are going. You know, yeah, certainly they believe it's it's going to be sub four yeah. percent. You know, we've been asked by various people to do numbers on um, you know can you make money at four? Can you make money at three? Can you make money in this business at a two percent fee? Mm. Um, there are companies out in the market now charging in relative terms the equivalent of less than three percent. Mm. So the industry's got a lot of change to make because if you're now running at 7% and making a 20% profit, um, you won't survive in a 4 or 5% fee environment no. if you continue the same way. Yeah. So we're yeah. looking at those sort of challenges and saying, look, where can, we, where can we generate revenue for an agency through our platform? Mm -hmm. And that's a big uh, part of where we are going forward. So most of our time now is spent looking at the revenue bases we can generate for agencies and how we can promote that through our platform to increase that on the agency side. So really can you... Better. Can you give us a can you give us an idea as to what that looks like? Like where where are, there, say, where yeah, are these like ideas popping we sort up? Of touched on earlier with a simple thing like a connection, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a connection currently with an agency, they might, if they're really good at what they do, convert sixty or seventy percent of the prospective tenants they have to mm -hmm. a connection fee. Yep, which is not a bad result. Yep. When you go forward, you get a really great workflow and you get that customer journey sorted out from the time of um, the first inquiry. You go from having one approved tenant back to having maybe three or four or five applicants to maybe having 20 or 30 inspections. You can mm. drive that back to 20 or 30 rather than the one. Right. And you can also then vastly increase your numbers because you've got a much more consumer-friendly way of doing the whole business transaction and you've mm -hmm. got it contained on platform. You know, they can pay, they can connect, they can do everything through the app. Yep. And that's where consumers are going. I mean, we have found out very early on with our payments platform testing, consumers weren't um, uh, worried about costings. What they were really, really concerned on was convenience. Yeah. It had to be super convenient. Yeah. And if everything worked and it was really convenient, happy days. Yep. Yeah. But that's, that's where the market's going. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true, isn't it? I mean, I think for a long time, tenants have kind of been second class citizens in in that space. In that they've, it's been expected that they just tolerate all sorts of inconvenience, oh, even absolutely. greater than even greater absolutely. than um, than homeowners. Yeah. Let's just pause there for a moment and hear a quick word from our sponsors. As we all know, the problems of the world can always be solved with good company and good wine. And for a truly great wine, check out Smidge Wines from the McLaren Vale in South Australia. Smidge Wines has been rated five red stars by the James Halliday Australian Wine Companion since 2017. Whether you love a big, bold Shiraz, a beautiful, well-rounded Cabernet Sauvignon, or a Montepul Chiano, a Tempranillo, or a Fiano, check out smidgewines.com. Sold exclusively online and proud to be official wine of Australian PropTech. So, so Sandy, you guys are – our property is um, in the cloud. Indeed. Tell us what that means. Oh, look, it just means that your server is somewhere other than your office, really. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't mean a server fails to exist. So what we work with a company called Rackspace who are based out of Sydney, so our server farm is in Sydney. So we work out of servers based out of Sydney. Uh, they're backed up all over the world, but the basic servers are within Sydney. Um, so, yeah, there is always a server somewhere. Yep. Um, and what it means is you can access your data from anywhere in the world. So your people right. can be at home, they can be on the road, they can be in the office. It makes absolutely no difference to how they work. Mm -hmm. uh, the other big thing in our industry is a lot of sort of mid-sized offices get caught in this real conundrum where they haven't got a massive IBM-scale business, but they do have massive IBM-scale costs. Yeah. Because they have to go yeah. and buy servers that cost thirty, forty thousand dollars. They then have to employ some very highly paid person to keep them upright and running, um, and it's a huge cost burden for them. Yeah. Um, and really, most offices these days, property management is about the only thing they still run on their servers. Oh God! Okay, it's, and it's sitting under Mary's desk, and she yeah, you know, and look, gives it a kick; it'll knock over. Yeah, and we had one the other day. Yeah, you <laughs> will always come into every year or so. They say, "Oh, money!" They say, "Oh, look, Kylie, your server's not looking real flash. You probably need to replace it. It's only going to be thirty-eight thousand dollars. Would you like me to order the new one?" <laughs> no. And, yeah, and then you've got this belt that are going, "My God, thirty-eight grand! What do I do?" Oh, and, gosh. and that's just the way it's operated for so many years. And. Um, you know, nearly every office on that sort of mid-scale, mid-size scale has a consultant on board on a retainer. 
Oh, gosh. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a, a major amount of cost. So, yeah, look, servers, it's cloud-based computing. It's, it's not, um, you know, back a couple of years ago, no one understood it. it. It was very much, it just goes off in the ether somewhere and God knows what happens and then comes back and it's all terribly dangerous and all this sort of stuff. My data's insecure. You know, I would say to anyone that sort of thinks that, that you really just need to check it through. Cloud-based computing and server farms are so much more secure than anybody could ever have in their own office. Mm. The most insecure way to have your data is in a server in your office. Yes. Without yeah. any shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Um, so our pro- so do I, is there an app that's associated with our property as well? Like, okay, can I use it on my mobile? Yes, yeah, so a number of apps. So we have a data platform that sits there. Um, yep. And you as a tenant or as a landlord or as a property manager have your own app, mm-hmm. um, which goes into that database and does the job you need it to do for you. Right. So, you know, from the landlord's perspective, we do a whole lot of smart stuff. Um, it looks at their um, basic financials, obviously, and gives them that on call. And, you know, again, this is a big saving for property manager. You know, in years gone by, half your time as a property manager was spent people phoning you up, especially landlords, going, can you send me this document? I can't find it. Mm-hmm. And then getting very upset with you because you took two days to get back to them because you had 200 of those calls. Um, <laughs> because it was the end of the month. Well, yeah. <laughs> you were a bit busy um, doing the end of month. <laughs> now on their app or on their portal, app demand 24-7. So they can get anything they want whenever they want. So the convenience level for them is just vastly higher. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, we've worked a lot with the app to make it really user-friendly. So whether you're a tradie, whether you're the property manager, whether you're the landlord or the tenant, You've got an app that delivers what you need it to do. Mm-hmm. So the tenant can log maintenance when they need to. Um, it'll prompt them to take a photograph or a video. If it says leaky tap, it'll say take a video. Mm-hmm. So obviously there's no point in still photograph of a leaking tap. Mm-hmm. So just little things like that that make all the difference in the world. Yep. Um, it keeps records of different um, of fixtures within the property. So tradesmen can look at licences and then serial numbers and what have you. It just right. makes the job a lot easier. and A lot of times it saves uh, the second call out. So instead of yes. having a, a two call out maintenance job, which costs four hundred dollars, you've got a single call out. It's two hundred dollars. Right. So yeah, it, it's just much more convenient and much more cost effective for everybody. Yeah. So I have an investment. I have an investment property, and my uh, which is run by a very large agency um, on the Gold Coast, actually. And I noticed that they had moved to our property recently yeah, because I got a whole <laughs> lot of different I, – yeah, I got – as a landlord, I was like, oh, hang on, what's this? And, yeah, I was able to kind of ins- look, look at my um, account and see a whole pile of things that until then had been a complete black box. So, um, so yeah, really love I really yeah. love that side of it. What What's the feedback that you've had from from the maintenance side of the business, like from tradies? Um, tradies, it varies. So, so it was initially set up from the tradie side. Yeah, because it was to our be tradie originally. You, yeah, to be honest with you, we sort of have left them a bit um, to the side in the last couple of years while we've been really concentrating on the agency face with the landlord and the agency face of it. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of scope for us to work with our trade side. We've got about 55,000 active trades on platform at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a lot of people. Um, yeah. So we're delivering quite a lot of service to them. Uh, they, they're doing a lot of jobs through the platform. Um, so we're working that through into the future, and there's a lot of ways we're, we're looking at going with that to increase the advantages to them. You know, they get a marketplace where they can get jobs really quickly, they can service them quickly, um, it saves them a lot of time, it'll schedule their jobs out, it allows them to run teams of guys within the app. So, yeah, there's a lot of good benefits for them. But it, it makes them do stuff as well. You know, it, it doesn't... Um, because it's from the agency perspective, it forces them to do things. It forces them to take a photo when the job's finished. Right. There's a whole yep. lot of things it makes them do. Right. So you, know, you can get a bit of pushback from that as an agent, but that's you want certain things done. Well, and you want them done a certain way so that you yeah. know that the quality is there too, don't you? Like if Absolutely, it's, um, yeah. yeah. So, so how many real estate or how pro- how many property managers are in the platform? I know you said there was about a hundred thousand um, managers uh, doors. Be, yeah, um, well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. offices. I'll, 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 I'll go I, with I, offices. I honestly couldn't tell you. I can have a look at right. user level and see, but yeah, look, I honestly yeah. couldn't say. So, um, have you have you got any uh, big name or you know clients that uh, that you'd like to brag about? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm always happy to do that. Here's a free look, kick. There was a, there was a conference, you know, one of our favourite conferences every year. It's a real, um, business of real estate conference down in the Gold Coast mm-hmm. that Mike Sheargold runs. It's always a, a super event. Uh, there's always great people there. I think yep. you were there a couple of years ago. I, I was there this time. I caught you up with Kate. Yep. Yeah, there shout out go. to Michael. Very busy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, look, that's a great event. Now, there were four speakers from memory that got up talking about property management. There was um, Ewan Morton, who runs Morton's, obviously. Um, there was Sardner Smiles, who um, runs the Harcourts Group for property management. Uh, Kathy Crampton, who runs a place. And mm -hmm. um, Byron from O'Brien's in mm -hmm. Melbourne. Uh, they all um, gave us from the stage a great um, a testimonial. So fantastic. that was, for us, that was fantastic because there's some really great clients. Morton's in particular, we love working with that group. Um, they're really dedicated in what they're doing. They put a lot of time and a lot of effort into getting their change management sorted out. Um, and they're just a great company to work with. Um, you were saying at lunch here recently that he had a, oh, I think it was over $40,000, he mentioned, monthly increase in his leasing fees from using our, our lease renewal module. Fantastic. That was straight away. Yeah, fantastic. That's well. That that's certainly um, a better way to spend forty grand than on a server, isn't it? Or a better way to receive. Oh. It's better to receive forty grand a month than it is One to month. spend thirty <laughs> grand on a server. So, so look, there's been a lot of. Um, our property is one of like a, a, a plethora of, of new startups that have been popping up in the in the property management space. Yep. What are your key differences to some of the? the other ones out there? Look, the, the big difference is the level of automation and the level of sophistication in that big central heavy product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a conversation I have with a lot of people. It's very difficult to build that big product you need to run this business if you start with something small. Yeah. And what often happens in this business is people dip their toe in the water and they go and get a trial done and then they start building a system in a very basic format that might handle 10 properties, then 100, and then 200, then 400, and it sort of builds gradually. Mm -hmm. You can't make it work that way. You know, mm -hmm. I think in our industry, everyone understands the, the concepts of construction. So it would seem ridiculous to say, hey, you can go and build a garden shed and put your four by three metre slab down, and in a year or so's time, we'll decide we're going to put a 58 storey building on that. Mm -hmm. And that'll mm -hmm. all be okay. That'll just somehow yeah. magically just all work. Mm -hmm. And that would just seem utterly ridiculous. Yeah. But in software development, people seem to think that's somehow going to work. Right. And, you know, it's, it's the same deal. It won't and it can't. Yeah. So, yeah, we were really lucky. I mean, our second client was the Cronus Group, who are mm -hmm. still great clients and that yep. probably should have been on my first list. Yep. Um, but, yeah, the Cronus business is a, a large business. So we're getting, you know, not shy of that much shy of 10,000 properties. So from day one, our, our platform was built to handle, you know, Big, big rent rolls. And right. it's made a, a, a huge difference in the way it was engineered and designed. Cool. So I think and that's our core difference is the, 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 the size and the ability and the technical engineering within that central piece we have. Right. And... And so how, because uh, Ewan's actually, uh, Ewan actually tells a great story about, you know, when you migrate to new technology, basically everyone needs a lie down and a, <laughs> and a stiff drink and a lie down for a couple of months after they've done it because it's always so traumatic. What's the onboarding process like getting, like, Moving yeah, from a, a that's an existing one of those system. challenges is mm -hmm. is getting that piece ready for the market and right for the market and listening to what feedback is and looking at what happens and and trying to develop a process that works and we're right in the step of, of changing that at the moment into a upping it again. So we're now looking at a, a process that's sort of eight to ten weeks as a, a full onboarding process, mm -hmm. and it's really interesting. You know, if you talk to Russell, our CTO, um, he just shakes his head at the real estate business. He said, "Why do people in the real estate business?" do hard changeovers on software. Now, what that means is I run on product X until Friday afternoon on the 30th of the month, and yep. then that night I send the team into my office and we put a new program in and we switch all our data over to product Y, and from tomorrow we're on product Y. Right. And we think that's okay. Whereas right. if you went into the hospital system anywhere or someone in a legal practice and said, I'm going to do that, they would think you were insane. Yeah. They would literally yeah. think you had lost your mind to try and do that. Yeah. It's such a dangerous thing to do and it's so difficult to pull off. Yes. So, yeah, we don't do that. We do what we call a soft change where we yeah. sit in over the top of the other product and we run them simultaneously for a period of time and it's really a matter of when the agency is comfortable to turn that first product off. Yeah. So they migrate over and they do it gradually and they do it in a time frame that works for their guys. Yeah. Um, and what's what's the feedback that you get? I mean, you know, real estate agents are notoriously um, anxious or, I mean, a little bit anti about sort of changing programs or platforms. Absolutely. What's the feedback you've had? <laughs> I don't think that's an unfair thing to say. Um, yeah. what, what's the feedback been from people who have moved over? Look, it's, it's totally dependent on where their mindsets were when they did the job. 
Mm-hmm. Um, we find that guys, again, you get back to the Morton experience, it's fantastic because people know where they're going and what they're doing. Yeah. Some other people would just turn on as a new product, let's give it a go. That becomes quite often very hard. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly over, over time, once they get there, it's always good. Um, but getting there, the challenge is being ready before you start, not taking it as you go once you start moving down the line. You know, change management's a big issue. People, if they don't see what they, they are used to seeing, they literally will lose their minds. Yeah, they do, don't they? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I can give you a great example. Um, when we did a, a demonstration for a conference not that long ago, we uh, had uh, one of our trainers setting up for an arrears demonstration. And she said, look, we've, we've got to put some new data in because the data we had in there on an 8,000 property portfolio, there were only three items for the property manager. She said, I need a bit more stuff to, to work through. And we had a look because that was real data from a client. Mm-hmm. So what it transpired was there were three items for a property manager to attend to physically, but there were 852 items that were automated behind that. Wow. Okay. So that was a really good example. Um, and, of course, in automation, you, you manage by exception. Mm-hmm. So yes. right now, most property managers just manage everything. So you're yes. a property manager, you've got 200 properties, you get a list of all the arrears for the day. Mm-hmm. The first thing most people start with their list of arrears and it's pages long because everything is on there. Mm-hmm. Whereas in our system, it says... Well, you've got three things, three <laughs> not, things. not 860. So I'm only going to tell you those three things because they're the only things you have to do. <laughs> now, you can go back in the system and have a look and see what else went and see the logs and where everything's going. But we don't hammer you with all that stuff because you don't have to do it. Let's just take a short break and now a word from our sponsors. If your business is growing quickly, you need to scale your team. Bepo is an Australian outsourcing company that specialises in helping real estate and technology businesses to grow. Outsourcing is not just about bringing on staff with a lower cost base. Bepo recruits and manages staff based in the Philippines who will become full-time members of your team. They will help you identify the key skill sets, the employment history and other attributes that you need from your employees and match your requirements with the right staff. Bepo will also help you to break down your structure, job descriptions, task management and to understand how having a virtual team fits into your organisation. Done properly, outsourcing can help you understand the internal processes of your business, drive your efficiency and provide you with a roadmap for growth. So talk to Bepo and scale your business for success. So, Sandy, what are, what are property managers going to do without all these gazillions of things <laughs> not, <laughs> not requiring their attention? <laughs> that would be the old but aim, talk to the client. Yep. Because, look, I, I saw a social media post someone sent me the other day and it was on a, um, it was a complaint. And it was a complaint about an office using our platform and the complaint essentially said, love the app, love the software program, I just can't get the property manager to call me back. Right. So they love using the app and all the technology, everything technology provided for them, fantastic. But they couldn't get the human oh, still couldn't talk to the property manager. <laughs> <laughs> and that really drove them crazy. And it does. Yeah. And the whole point of freeing up time is so you can do the stuff that matters. Do, do the human stuff. Yeah, we had yeah, um, Sarah yeah, Bell on the, the show. The value you add in that value chain. You know, it's yeah. that, Direct talking to tenants and landlords. Yeah. You're giving a human interface in what's actually happening and sorting people's problems out, which, you know, for a good property manager, they can do in seconds. Yeah. And I think, and I think too, what, uh, what a lot of landlords are looking for from their property manager uh, insights and, adv- and advice on what they can or should be doing yeah. to grow their assets. Absolutely. You know? like, well, their, how their can asset I... base in particular, not just that asset. Mm, you know, yeah. They don't want calls from you as their property managers saying, hey, the tap's leaking, do you want to pay for the repair? Mm. You know, that's not a value conversation. No, no <laughs> so, it's not at all. So, yeah, that's the big thing is, you know, we looked at that and it was interesting. Macquarie did a study where they said about 45% of tasks in management can be automated. Mm-hmm. We did a time in motion study, or one of our clients did actually, the large portfolio, Coronas, um, did that time in motion study, and that had a 68% saving in time. Yeah. So Macquarie said 45% of the tasks, um, their business said 68% of time was equated to that, mm-hmm. which was probably about right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a question of what you do with all that white space. I mean, you have that white space now, but what do you do with it? Well, I, I guess you're going to be using some of the elements of our property to actually start to grow your revenue in new ways. It's not just yeah. the percentage, the commission. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, we run stale property reports in the market to show people they can see what's there and, you know, how those are going. Um, it's interesting. A lot of I've, I've watched one client at a large office, very well-run business, and it was really interesting. He said, oh, yeah, there's Joe. He's one of my clients, you know, sees six properties with us, and then he suddenly noticed there were two with someone else. He didn't even, <laughs> know, he did not even know about them. <laughs> Thought he had them all. No, Joe's yeah, keeping exactly. you honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that sort of deep dive reporting can really be useful and getting insights from that. And a lot of the work we're now doing also is, is looking at what data we have and what insights you can drive from that data to help the business. Right. And that was one of the big things with Morton's was saying in reporting. They didn't want to know what had happened after it had happened. You yeah. know, that, that is pointless and I can't do anything about it. I want to know before it happens. Yes. So yeah. tell me what the indicators are before something goes bad. So yeah. we look at different metrics. So in tradespeople, for instance, when we um, get a rating for a tradesperson, you know, the old system is you as the client get asked to rate the tradesperson and you go, yeah, he's a good guy, give him five. <laughs> Whereas we don't do that. You know, it just, it's a pointless exercise. What we do, we look at all sorts of metrics, about 18 of them. So uh, was his bill within market rate for that job for that area? Was his um, invoice, did his invoice match his quote? Did he hit the job in a certain period of time? What was his response time to get the invoice, the quote in? All those mm -hmm. sorts of metrics that are actually important. Mm -hmm. And we and measure them. And then we rate him based on those measurements. Right. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, yeah. so I know you guys are super busy at the moment, but what have you got on your – and I, I can see because we're videoing this as we go, I can see you've got a, a, a lovely whiteboard behind you. What's on your roadmap? What's coming up for the future uh, of our property? So, look, the roadmap is where the big thing we're doing now is we're in um, – the final part of the pilot phase of our payments platform. So we're going to our next phase two um, in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So a number of about another 5,000 properties go on to it. Um, by January 1, that'll be open to the market in general. So right, right across Australia. So that's mm -hmm. a big, big change. Um, our tenancy acquisition module is the next big release, which will happen at about the same sort of time, uh, January mm -hmm. 1. What does that look like? What's a tenancy acquisition that module? fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> If you so do say so it, it takes, again, a lot of the – where the, the process currently is through a lot of different pieces, some of which are within the agency, some of which are outside, and it brings them together. Mm -hmm. And it gives one single customer journey. So it starts with the management agreement. So I'm the property manager. I'm on site with the owner. We look at the property and we run some certain facts. I hit a button on the app I have as the property manager. It flicks straight to your app as the owner. For the management agreement, you can go, yep, I'm okay with that. You electronically sign it. Bang. That's all done. It's filed. Okay. It's finished. It's done. By the time I get back to the office, it's in my diary and it's starting to format up basic advertising for me to, to um, change up and have a look at. Mm -hmm. So I'll three sets of ads. So I can fix that up and tidy it. I can upload it to whatever sites I need to upload to. It will then start measuring and controlling my responses to that advertising. Right. It will allow people to book and schedule inspections to that, to that property. Right. It'll take their applications. Yep. It will automatically do a lot of the betting. Right. It'll cross-check the references. Mm -hmm. So when the reference goes out to a property manager, instead of being asked to provide a reference and all sorts of documents, it will simply go to you with a tick and flick list. Right. So okay. if you're an agent, you have an outgoing tenant, there's a lot, lot less work involved because that's one of the big bugbears in the industry. I lose a tenant, so they're no mm. longer giving me any money at all. Mm -hmm. They go somewhere else, they make 10 or 15 applications to other property, mm -hmm. and I now have to deal with 15 of those reference inquiries, which yes. is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah, taking all that side out. So it, it goes through that process, it automates a lot of the process. Um, once the, um, uh, the agency is happy to, to nominate a, a potential um, tenant to the landlord, um, all I have to do is quickly check the, um, the documents, the CMA is auto automatically uplifted for me to edit if I want to, or just send. Mm -hmm. um, it'll give me the lease documents, pre-populate them, because as the information has been loaded, it started to populate all these documents. Right. So my lease is yep. now fully pre-populated. Everything's ready to go. I get landlord approval. It's gone. Done. The chasing okay. of all those documents is automated. So I chase it down from the tenants. I chase it back from the landlord. It automatically files when it comes back. Mm -hmm. uh, that vast amount of work that used to be there is now reduced to, you know, a few minutes. Fantastic, so, fantastic. And like I said, you can now start getting a lot of more revenues out of that, and that's yep. one of the big things. So that, yep. that journey is now really well defined. You can plug in your revenue items when you need to. You can really start managing that process. Fantastic. Cool. So 
Um, that all sounds amazing, um, Sandy. Thank you so much. So, well, if there's busy. any, we have lots to do. Uh, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. I mean, That's it sounds so easy. It sounds so easy on a whiteboard, doesn't it? Well, and then <laughs> someone's got to build um, it. Yeah, but sort of uh, the integration as you would have seen it with different. Um, home automation systems, all that's coming through very shortly. So, you know, you mm -hmm. can obviously go straight to app through voice on your home automation system. You know, smart little things like that, inbox management. Um, our new um, uh, centre for the Dash for Property Managers allows property managers to um, to talk to people on omni-channel. So it's it's a, whatever channel the client suits will will run up in a single platform. So oh, a great. whole lot of great advantages like that. Fantastic. Cool. There is an endless list. No, cool. And, and look, and I remember you said to me when um, I reached out to you to do the interview, you said that, you know, you just need to work 100 hours a week and poor old Russell needs to work 200. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, everything will be fine, yeah. <laughs> then you'd be ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, so now if anyone uh, out there is listening that wants to get in touch with you, what's the best What's the best way? Uh, look, email's always great, sandy at ourproperty.com.au. Yep. Um, more than happy to that... take phone calls still. <laughs> oh, right, you, old school. <laughs> yeah, still, still happy to take a phone call. <laughs> right, you don't have an omni-channel that you just sort of <laughs> send it all out to? <laughs> yeah, you can do me anything, messengers, any of them, not WeChat. <laughs> Cool. Well, look, thanks so much for your time, Sandy. It's been absolutely fantastic learning about um, how our property is revolutionising um, property management. Uh, long way to go, but we're pretty excited for the journey. That's great. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Carly. Talk soon. So that was Sandy Moore, CEO of Our Property, a new cloud-based property management system that is helping PMs deliver better experiences to tenants and landlords while also making their life easier. Now, while I'm not 100% sure if I agree with Sandy's statement that app stacking doesn't work and that you only need one platform, I do have enormous respect for the work that our property is doing and the way that they are truly revolutionising the tasks of property management. The research tells us that property managers are seriously overworked and stressed just because of the sheer volume of tasks that need to be done, while service levels to landlords and tenants leave a lot to be desired. Coordinating property management and managing the accounting side of property management is an enormous part of that workload, so any technology that streamlines those processes is worth looking at, especially if it's one that can increase your monthly earnings by about 40k, as it did at Morton's. So if you're looking to grow your property management business, check out our property. We've included information on how to reach them in our show notes. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode of the PropTech Podcast, we would love you to tell your friends, drop me a line or follow us on Spotify. I'd like to thank my audio support, Charlie Hollands, my amazing digital marketer, Jill Escudero and our sponsors, Bepo, making outsourcing easy, Smidge Wines, official wine of the prop tech industry and Home Prezzo, helping you scale your marketing by turning your data into content. Thanks so much, everyone. Until next week, keep on prop teching.